Okay, in software testing, it is usually to have a count the number of times a given procedure is called during the course of a computation. Write a procedure make monitor that takes as input a, pr a procedure f that itself takes one input. The result returned by make monitors is a third procedure, we'll call it mf, that keeps track of the number of times it has been called by maintaining an internal counter. If the input to MF is the special symbol how many calls, then MF returns the value of the counter. If the input is the special symbol reset count, then MF resets the counter to zero. For any other input, MF returns the result of calling F on that input and increments the counter. Okay. Okay, so here's the make monitor. So make monitor is going to need to take as input a procedure F. So, sorry, let's immediately recognize that. Now this is the case where we do need a, a let because we're going to have our um, we're going to have a frame to keep track of this internal variable, which is the count. So now we've got not just uh, um, a closure over the, the function f, but we're going to have a closure over this count variable that will start off at zero. Um, and now make monitor is going to return a third procedure. Yeah, the result the result returned by make monitor is the third procedure that's called mf. So whoops. Um, so there's two, well, all right, like we could do this way. So we'll define this MF procedure, which takes a parameter, um, we'll call it Q. So the assumption here is that F is a procedure that accepts a number. So when we, we, when we pass something to MF, if it's not a number, then we sort of, we treat it as one of these special symbols. Um, all right, so there's going to be a cond here. Um, so if Q is equal to the symbol how many calls, then instead of calling F, we just return count. If Q is equal to the symbol reset count, then we just reset the counter, yeah. So then we set bang count to zero. And we'll just say else here. Otherwise, we're going to call the function with Q. So, um, and then we're going to, we also have to increment the counter. Yeah, I'm gonna, so if you read the, the text here, it says it returns a result of calling F on that input and increments the counter. I'm gonna do that in the other order because then the begin statement makes sense. So we're gonna increment the counter. Oops. And then we're going to apply F to Q and also return the result of that. So we're not quite done because what we did was we defined this procedure called MF and then we actually have to return it. So this is the, the result. Instead of like defining MF, and then returning it here, we could have just had it be unnamed and have this be like lambda of Q and then have the, and then we wouldn't need to explicitly return it because then the result of the let expression would be the lambda. But at this point we've defined it and we're returning it. I'm pretty sure this is right. Let's try it out. Okay, does square root exist? Yep. Okay. Oh, what 
happened? Oh, do you guys see what went wrong here? It's actually a good error. Nobody sees it? Uh, so like Go ahead. You're you're somehow passing the square root um the symbol how many calls instead of um a number. That's right. What it wants. That's right. And the reason we're doing that is that I spelled it wrong. It needs to have a question mark. And so it fell through and yeah. Oh, and there's two calls because we incremented first, even though then we failed. I guess that was a call. The one that failed was a call, right? It was a call that failed. Yeah. Um, all right, let's let's draw this one. Okay, so um, there's going to be the global environment, and we're going to have something called make monitored. And that will be a procedure. Well, now we have the procedure, we, it's easier to draw. It's parameters. It will take one parameter named f, and its body is this let expression. And its frame pointer goes back to the top level. Um, and then we have a thing called, uh, what do we call the, we called it s. All right, so let's see. So s was the result of make monitored of square root. So in order to evaluate that we had to create a frame where the parameter f <coughs> excuse me got bound to square root which itself is like a procedure right this is not this is a procedure square root um, and that that frame has its parent frame the parent frame of, of the make monitor procedure so it it's like also points up to there. And then in the context of this frame, the body got evaluated. So the let expression got evaluated. And that actually did stop. So the let expression created another frame where count got bound to zero. That frame has as its parent pointer, oh, so this is sort of important. What's the parent pointer of this frame? So it, we're, we're in the context of this frame and we're evaluating let blah, 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 let like count be zero. That'd be bound to S. Well, let's call this one frame one, and this is frame two, and this is frame three. So the question is, which is the parent frame of this frame that got created as a result of this evaluation? Frame two? It is frame two. So the question is why? So here we have to recognize that let is really a lambda. So um, in the context of this frame, a new lambda got created. So why don't we actually draw that out? Because it got, it's actually like a two-step process before this frame got, before frame three got created, a lambda was created first, and then it was applied. 
So this let expression, we actually, when this leads into the rest of the, the whole problem set, this let expression, we should rewrite it as a lambda. It's lambda of count. And then the body of it is the body of the let, which is this defined, this is the entire body of um, the lambda. So we're going to say it's the thing that starts with define mf of q and then ends with returning mf. Um, that's the, and, and then, so that, so that actually runs. Um, the lambda gets created and so it actually creates a, um, a lambda expression, a, a procedure object. The procedure object has um, the params of count and the body is that body that starts with define and ends with returning a procedure. Um, and the reason frame two ends up becoming the parent is that this procedure was created in the context of this frame, so that's that's where its its um, environment pointer goes. Now that procedure got created, and then it gets applied to the the set of variables associated with the let. So that procedure gets created and applied to zero. And when that happens, this frame got created. So that's when it gets created. First, the procedure gets created and then it gets applied. That's what let is. It's like, it's a two-step operation. It causes a procedure to be created and then it causes it to be applied. And so, because this procedure was created in that frame's context, when we apply it, this frame links back to that same context, that same frame. So, okay. So there's gonna be a third procedure, heads up. So now, this frame got created for the application of the, um, the, the, let's, the let's lambda, and now that, that procedure, the body gets evaluated. So this body gets evaluated in the context of this frame, the define MF of Q, blah, 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 um, and then returning MF. So now define is yet another lambda. So now this procedure MF gets created. Um, the MF procedure has its um, parameters Q and its body is the con statement. And its parent frame is this one. And then at the end of this body, the last thing that happens is MF gets returned, which is this procedure. So S links to that. So my next question is, after all that happened, does this procedure still exist? I mean, it exists. It should. I think not. I mean, it, you know, with the way garbage collection works, it doesn't immediately get, like, garbage collected, but this procedure was um, the procedure that was created by the let, and it's in essence an anonymous procedure that is temporary. It's like it's equivalent to when we would say, you know, back at the beginning of the class, and we did this yesterday. If if we said like lambda, to make the square the squaring procedure. Let's space there. And apply it to something. This procedure gets created, applied, and then goes away. Um, it's it's the same story for this procedure. This this procedure was created by the let. The let is rewritten 
and we're, we're actually going to go over this on Monday, the, the, an example of let being dynamically rewritten into this lambda. Um, then it gets applied, and then it goes away. It was all like a, a, te a temporary process. Um, the results of its work hang around because it, um, as part of its uh, application, this frame was created, and that procedure was created, and we bound S to this procedure. So the work it did persists, but the procedure itself goes away. So like at the end of the whole story, like that procedure gets garbage collected. Sort of makes sense. Um, let's move on. <laughs> 